Right, so, as I'm sure many of you have heard, Donald Trump has been banned permanently from Twitter. <laughs> Look, man. Let's just say I'm not going to cry over it. Let's put it that way. So as you can see here, let, let's go through this, okay? Let's go through the whole thing. As you can see here, they permanently disabled his account. All right? And the, the reasoning was, after, this is Twitter saying, after close review of recent tweets from Donald Trump and his account and the context around them, we have permanently suspended the account due to the risk of further incitement of violence. So when, when you open that and when you look at it, this is, this is what they specify as having led them to ban him, okay? They say they banned him because of this. To all those who have asked, I will not be going to the inauguration on January 20th. That's the tweet that Donald Trump put out that made Twitter decide to ban him. They say, due to the ongoing tensions in the United States and an uptick in the global conversation in regards to the people who violently stormed the Capitol on January 6th, these two tweets must be read in the context of broader events in the country and the ways in which the president's statements can be mobilized by different audiences, including to incite violence, as well as in the context of the pattern of behavior from this account in recent weeks. And, and sorry, just in case you missed that, that first one, because it's two tweets. He says also, that, again, that, you know... Uh, the 75 million great American patriots who voted for me, America first, and make America great again will have a giant voice long into the future. They will not be disrespected or treated unfairly in any way, shape, or form. So they're using these two tweets and Donald Trump, you know, saying that, oh, the election was stolen from him as the reason to ban him. Now, look, man, the Twitter policy below is glorification of violence. That's what they cite as, you know, his violation, okay? If you go and you look at it over here, they cover a lot of stuff. The glorification of violence. Now, let's be real for a second. Because Donald Trump has been president for four years, right? That orange clown has... I'm not kidding. Like, I, I cannot keep count of the violent things that he has said. And glorified. I, I ran out of, of, of space in the tabs to show you. So let, let's go through some of the things that Trump has said. Okay? Do you remember when he threatened to bomb Iran? Do you remember that? Yeah? He said that, let this serve as a warning that if Iran strikes any Americans or American assets, we have targeted 52 Iranian sites representing the 52 American hostages taken by Iran many years ago, some at a very high level and important to Iran and the Iranian culture. And those targets and Iran itself will be hit very fast and very hard. The USA wants no more threats. Are, you're going to sit there and tell me that's not violent or a threat or I mean just to remind you Iran has 35 if I'm not mistaken UNESCO World Heritage Sites you know me, me as a Syrian I'm very proud of Syrian history we have we also have a fair share of UNESCO uh, World Heritage Sites and when I heard Iran had 35 I was like what whoa okay we got some competition now <laughs> no seriously like, like this is he, he's you know, he's openly threatening to bomb another country, to destroy Iranian culture, and by extension also, UNESCO World Heritage Sites, which is, I mean, it, this is human history, right? right? This is equivalent to ISIS. There, you would see videos of ISIS in Syria entering museums uh, and, and smashing uh, artifacts, uh, statues, thousands of years old. I mean, look at Palmyra. Palmyra, the Silk Road. They blew up the, the Ark, the, the gate of Palmyra. That, 
That's thousands of years old. That thing has survived everyone. It survived the Romans, the, the, the British, it, 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 the French. It's, it survived the fucking Nazis, the Vichy French. And, and they come and destroy that shit. This is the same thing. Thuggery. I mean, I mean really, like, cri a crime against humanity. Not, not just inciting violence. This guy wanted to, wanted to destroy another country. We're not done. L look at this. Now he, he's, he's rage-tweeting at the Iranian president. Saying, you will suffer consequences. The likes of which few throughout history have ever suffered before. Be cautious. And once again, threatening Iran over here. And then over here, he, co he confesses to murder. Okay? He confesses to killing General Qasem Soleimani. I mean... I, I really hope that sinks into people's minds. Donald Trump ordered an assassination. He ordered a hit. Not just on Soleimani, but also Abu Mahdi and everyone who was traveling with them in that detail. Right? He almost started a war with Iran because of that. As a result, Ir Iraq's parliament voted to expel all U.S. troops. He confessed to murder. He came on Twitter and confessed to a murder. If you ordered a hit on someone and tweeted about it, you would go to jail. Never mind killing a general with a drone strike in another country. He came and confessed to murder right here on Twitter. Now he's, he's threatening Syria and Russia. Look at this. He's talking about Turkey. I will totally destroy and obliterate the economy of Turkey. And I love this unmatched wisdom. <laughs> In my great un unmatched wisdom. What a clown. What a goddamn clown. Here he's talking about the... When he, when he bombed Damascus with France and the UK, right? So this is when you had these lies about a chemical gas attack in Douma. And I remember calling my cousins trying to find out if they're okay. I was, I was, I was sitting here waiting because I knew they were about to strike and, and praying that they're not going to get killed. And he's coming on here and glorifying. Is this not a glorification of violence when, when you bomb another country and you come here and say a perfectly executed strike last night? Thank you to France and the UK for their wisdom and the power of their fine military. This is not a glorification of violence. It's not hyperbole. This literally concerns me, literally concerns my family. And before Trump became president, you remember when he was saying, why are we having all these people from shithole countries come here? Do you remember when Donald Trump said that? Do you remember when he said Mexicans are rapists? Do you remember all this stuff when he was not even president yet? So, so what, I wanna under, what, what I want to understand here is that why did it take Twitter and all the other platforms years to finally put their foot down? Everything I just read to you, was that not incitement of violence, glorification of violence? No? Why does it only matter now? That, that's my question. That's what I want to know. That's what I want to know. I think I have a right to know. Right? When this guy bombs my country. I think I have a right to know. But of course, you know... The boutique left, the neoliberals, the so-called progressives, they're, they're so fucking brain dead and brainwashed and they have such bad Trump derangement syndrome that if you even ask this question, they, th they think that you're saying, oh, so you're defending Trump? Why are you mad that he got banned? You like Trump? Yes, yes, I love Trump. I'm so glad that he almost killed my family when he bombed Damascus. I'm so glad that he's steal stealing Syrian oil. I'm so glad that he has special forces occupying Syrian land. I'm so glad that he's putting sanctions on my country. Yeah, yeah, I totally love Trump. You fucking dingus. I got more reasons to hate Trump than you, okay? 
And it, again, it's, it's absurd that I even have to preface that. And uh, to, to be fair, I could say that about every American president. They, they, <laughs> that's, how, that's, that's indicative of what warmongers and murderers they are. But seriously, like, like the fact you even have to clarify that is, is so d degrading and stupid. That's, that's the last time I will. I'm, I'm not even entertaining that nonsense. But you want to come here and tell me that all these tweets, that's not glorification of violence? They knew before he even got elected that he's racist, that he's saying uh, Mexicans are rapists and, and uh, drug dealers and saying that uh, people coming to America are coming from shithole countries. That's, that's fucking racist. That's disgusting. So you, where's the consistency here? Like, wh why is it okay to incite violence against foreign officials, against people... Uh, in other countries. Why is it okay to glorify murdering other people? Why? Explain that to me. Why were you not offended by that four years ago, two years ago, three years ago? Why, why, why did you not care? All of you. Where were you? Hmm? I, I thought Trump is so dangerous. And he's a piece of shit. Yeah, he is. So where were you? You know, you know... As Aaron Maté pointed out earlier, when, when the Gray Zone and, and Jimmy Dore and me, when we were reporting on the OPCW cover-up, right, and, and how, again, that was used to bomb Syria, why weren't you covering that? If you claim to oppose Trump, where were you? Why didn't you say anything? Why didn't you say anything about him uh, moving the embassy to, to Jerusalem? Recognizing the Syrian Golan Heights as uh, the occupied Syrian Golan Heights as Israeli. Why didn't you say anything when he was giving all the special treatment to Israel? Where were you? Why didn't you say anything about Assange, about the persecution? Yes, he's dangerous. And you said nothing. So, I mean, either you're a fucking hypocrite or you're an idiot. And, I mean, that does not bode well for you in either case. And so, you know, they came and banned his account, right? And not, and not just Twitter. Actually, <laughs> his phone is just a brick. So he's been banned from Twitter permanently. I think Facebook is just until he's out of office. I'm not sure. Each one of these platforms is different policy. But yeah, that, that's a blanket deplatforming right there. Okay, that's a blanket deplatforming. I mean, they just completely uh, got rid of him, basically, right? And sorry, I'm just I'm just closing some of these tabs because it's really hogging the computer resources. So, you know, you got people saying uh, that, OK, just one one second. Yeah, they're saying that, OK, that was a coup and. You know, he's a traitor, insurrection, and he's unstable. Got to get him out of office. We got to introduce the articles of impeachment, all this, all this stuff. OK, and then he's not protected by free speech. OK, man, hold on a second. Call, pause, hold that thought right there. What is this over here? Uh, sorry, that's the wrong tab. One second. I'm trying to I'm trying to get this one over here. What's this over here? John McCain with Al Qaeda. Right? So-called freedom fighters. What's this over here? AOC with fucking uh, right wing coup backers in, in Bolivia. What's that? What is that? Nancy Pelosi with Juan Guaido, this puppet that they tried to call the interim president of Venezuela. What is that? Those are not coups. So like you're OK with AOC, with Nancy Pelosi. You're OK with uh, Donald Trump himself and, and Mike Pompeo. Just all of these American politicians, you're OK with them supporting coups in other countries. It's OK for them to do that. It's OK for, you know, 
our capitals, our uh, government buildings, our institutions to be bombed and violated with your fucking taxpayer money, with your army. It's OK. It's OK for, for Donald Trump to come and undermine the governments of other countries. You don't mind when he does that. But when he does it to you, now it's an issue. Why are you not consistent? Why can't you be fucking consistent with your with your critique of him, with your principle? Why can't you be consistent? Why are you so full of shit? I mean, I, I, I find this unbelievable, right, that they, they come and call this a coup, right, when the cops are let, letting them in. Look at that, man. They're just letting them in. Like it's a museum or something, right? So apparently this is a coup, right? That, that's a coup. What, what about what's been happening in uh, Bolivia last year, right? When they literally trashed Evo Morales' house and they were... Uh, burn, uh, they, they trashed his sister's house as well, and they were burning down the houses of uh, uh, other government officials. A literal takeover by white supremacists and fucking fascists that was supported by all, all these Western powers, and especially the United States and the organiza Organization of American States. Where were all of you? Why, why did you not criticize that? That was backed by Trump. What, it's not a coup when it happens to brown people? It's not a coup when it happens to other people? You don't give a fuck? We're, we're not human beings to you? You know, and I posted about this on Twitter right here about, about my cousin. He's been on the show a couple of times. He might have shared some of these stories uh, on here when we talked about it. You know, that this car bomb going off outside his house, right? And this other time when, when they had mortars coming down and it killed one of his friends from high school. He just fucking died in front of him. And then his neighbor, on another occasion, she got her fucking legs blown off in front of him. By, by so-called moderate rebels. Literal fucking terrorists that are backed and supported by the United States. So, you know... You'll forgive me when, when I look at this shit over here, okay, when I, when I see this, I mean, th this is a joke in comparison. This is a fart. This is a joke. And, and the fact, my point here is that, I, again, I want to underline the hypocrisy because all of these uh, Congress people, a, a lot of the media class, they're pearl clutching. They're like, oh my God, this attack on our democracy. It was Pearl Harbor, according to Chuck Schumer. No, this, this is a joke. This is a fart. You, exact same motherfuckers, support way worse than other countries and have no problem with it. And you have no problem with it when Donald Trump was doing it too. And that shows you are fucking hypocrites. I mean, ju just look at this. This is in Damascus. This is like... Five minutes away on, uh, on, on foot from, from where my cousin lives. This looks like fucking Hamburg or Berlin in 1945. It still looks like that, by the way. This is Jobar, okay? This place, crawling with fucking terrorists. I mean, just 50 flavors of jihad, as I like to call them, right? There, there's this, this article over here talking about all the different groups. Look at this one, Okay. Harakat Nuruddin al Zankio. Check this out. Look what they were doing. This is a Sunni Islamist group based in Aleppo, right? In June 2016, a video of the group circulated showing its members beheading a 15 year old boy. The video received obvious attention not only due to the cruelness of the action, but also the fact that during that time, the United States had financially backed the organization. That's a coup, right? When you have jihadists trying to capture the economic heartland of Syria, which is Aleppo, or trying to capture the capital in Damascus, and, and they're lobbing mortars at civilians and fucking car bombs, right? This is a coup. This is what the United States supports. They are using uh, you know, proxy groups, uh, 
Al Qaeda offshoots to overthrow governments. This is a fucking coup. And, and when Donald Trump and Obama were supporting this shit, you said nothing. You had no fucking problem with that. Not the media class, not the political class. They didn't give a shit. They didn't give a crap. You know, in Vietnam, when they had the, the CIA had the Phoenix program and they killed 26 fucking thousand people, right? That's a coup. Okay, I mean, well, it was, it was more than that, but <laughs> I mean, th th this is another level, right? Th this is my cousin's uh, campus, right? A, a literal bloodbath. Look, you see a fucking bloodbath, literally. They killed 15 students that fucking day. The, the so-called moderate rebels supported by the United States. Although, to be fair, this was during the Obama administration, but, you know, of course... Uh, Donald Trump did not, did not stop uh, the United States' role in that war, right? These are coups. What happens in Syria? What, what, what's happening in uh, Bolivia, Venezuela? Those are coups, and they are sponsored by the same actors, and you, most of you say nothing. So it's really hard to take you seriously, because, I mean, either this means, like, you know... You're fucking racist. I don't know what it is. Maybe to you, people in Latin America or the Middle East are not human beings. Maybe that's why you don't care. Or I don't know. Maybe you don't mind it when, uh, you know, it's happening out of sight and out of mind. Or I, I don't know, like, like you actually agree with this. You, you, you enjoy it, even though you know it's happening. Like you, you, you don't care when Donald Trump does it or Obama does it. Like, what is your position here exactly? You, you say you're against white supremacy, right? You say you're against fascism, right? You say you're against coups, right? Why are you silent then when it happens in other countries and you're paying for it and your politicians are, are complicit in it? Trump, Schumer, Pelosi, Biden, all of them. They're all complicit. Why didn't you say anything? How can I take you seriously when you don't open your mouth about that? When you refuse to report on it? Hmm? And, you know, when, when, when they come along and they say things like, uh, give me one second, I'm just trying to get this other tab over here. Yeah, when Joe Biden, he's going on Twitter, okay? Okay, there we go. So, you, you see the double standard that's at play here? These are not apples and oranges. They're, very, <laughs> they're the exact same thing. And, and the fact that you have these wimps, these cowards, that never talk about foreign policy, it, you know, it, it's not because they're too dumb. No, no, they know exactly what's going on. They just don't want to because it hurts their bottom line. They're fucking cowards, right? It's so easy to, to oppose Trump and say like, oh yeah, you know, well, he, he, he deserved it, man. Uh, he should get banned. But... I don't know, when, when he was inciting violence and glorifying violence the last couple of years against people like me, against people in the Global South, you didn't give a fuck. You didn't say anything. And you still won't say anything when Biden does it and keeps, you know, the wars going. <laughs>